Sego Gunawage, Chief Mike DeLille here. It's been a while since I've been invited into your home, so thank you for that and uh, glad to be here. Just a couple of brief things I'd like to update the community on on recent events at the Mohawk Council of Gunawage. As the community has been aware, um, for the past three plus years, there's been an electronic gaming device pilot project in the community that was launched in 2018 with two proponents, Playground Poker and Magic Palace. And that has come to an end last week. Mohawk Council of Gunawage has ended the pilot project, which means that the Gunawage Gaming Commission will look into the, um, I'll say, process of ensuring that the two permits uh, remain in existence and according to the regulations. And there's going to be a lot of work that needs to take place now. For those who have not or were not at the public meeting in late December, I believe it was the 14th at the Knights of Columbus, a presentation was made by the two proponents of the electronic gaming devices uh, in the community, as well as a report that I would call operational and service impact to the community on these two uh, establishments here in Ganawage, presented by Ryan Montour. The individual proponents made their own presentations uh, and uh, gave numbers and uh, effects in terms of what they have seen over the course of the last three plus years. Obviously the pandemic played a role in terms of the period of time that the pilot project and its permits were uh, involved, but now that we've declared it over, uh, the work that will continue is uh, in conjunction with the report that uh, Ryan, Chief Ryan Mator presented to the community. And what that is, is I'll call it an impact assessment that needs to be done in terms of the Essential services, not only peacekeepers and fire brigade, but any other service through community services, KSCS and others, that these establishments would have an impact on operational service to our community. We want to assure that community comes first, as always, and that these uh, establishments get the type of service necessary, but not at the cost of the community, if I could put it that way. And by cost, I don't mean uh, only dollars and cents, also in terms of time time obviously in response of peacekeepers, fire, ambulatory, anything like that is paramount and we want to ensure that the community is serviced to the best of its abilities uh, in terms of those services. So there's going to be work moving forward to assure those impacts are mitigated. Uh, however, that gets done not only through permitting of KGC, but also through dialogue between the Mohawk Council of Gunawage, our Finance and Operations Department, as well as the two proponents on how we can mitigate these. So in a word, just to say there's more work that needs to happen before and if there is the possibility of more permits being issued. And I say it that way because we've already received a request in writing and a couple of other inquiries from people within the community and or institutions saying is it possible for us to receive a permit. No decision has been made. Obviously there are social impacts that need to be uh, assessed and addressed in terms of that. Uh, there is a public policy that was based in 1999 uh, against video lottery terminal and, and people, some people will say it's semantics between electronic gaming devices and VLTs as they were once known. But uh, those were based on information Mohawk Council then received from family, community members, and others that felt that there was a severe social impact in terms of those machines in certain establishments within Ganawage. So again, more assessment, more work, and lots more information and engagement with the community that will happen over the course of the next couple of months, maybe into six months or so. But again, the, the overall announcement is that the pilot project is over and more to come in the coming weeks and months, as I said. Uh, secondarily to that, uh, again, Mohawk Council of Gunawage has established a, I'll call it, new way to engage with the government of Quebec. Everybody's aware of the problems that we faced since the CAQ government became the authority in the province in terms of provincial government and their lack of interaction or even, I'll call it, respect for the ways of not just the Mohawks of Ganawage, the Mohawk Council of Ganawage, but indigenous populations 
across this province, as, as they call it, our territories. So in last spring, we gave them two documents, a renewed memorandum of understanding and a framework agreement for future negotiations. And we put a stall to that after they passed Bill 96 into law. We embargoed all discussions, political, administrative, and otherwise with the province uh, until such time as our Grand Chief, Kasanawe Skydir, met with uh, the Premier, Francois Legault, and that did happen August 16th of last summer. So since then, there's been a, I'll call it, administrative re-engagement with the province on transport and safety concern issues and, and such uh, through dialogue with our portfolio chiefs, the transport departments, respectively MTQ and, and Mohawk Council of Ganawage. But we need to reformulate our real political engagement with this government. So uh, last week again, the Mohawk Council agreed on a revised memorandum of understanding, some word changing and, and some I'll say more directness to the province in terms of how we want to operate amongst each other uh, and with each other, as well as the framework agreement as well. So I'll be meeting with the provincial negotiator, Jeff Kelly, the former Minister of Indian Affairs under the Liberal government, who's been mandated by their minister, uh, Ian Lafreniere, to engage with us. And this isn't new, it's been happening over the course of the last several years. But uh, we will look at the documents and ask him to bring it forward to the minister's office, to the premier's office, and ultimately to cabinet to have them re-engage with Kanawage on a political level. So no decisions in terms of Quebec and Kanawage at this point, but it's Kanawage's position that this is the final formal draft with no revisions necessary or wanted at this point. And our statement is going to be that this needs to be brought forward to cabinet as is, agreed upon, and then a signing ceremony will happen at some point in the near future. In Ganawagi is the ask from Ganawagi to Quebec. So a couple of major steps in the terms of revenue generation as well as political prowess of Ganawagi moving forward. So briefly, those are two updates for this, this time uh, for me being here. And, and again, thank you for inviting me into your homes. I'll be back in uh, a couple of months to talk about scenery and some of the engagements on that massive file as well. And I'm happy to say we've made some momentous changes and, and there is momentum behind it. And uh, I'll, stay to, I'll say stay tuned in terms of more to come on that file. So for now, thank you very much.